Hi, I'm Martin Garcia from the Believe in Me Foundation, and this is The Rosie O'Donnell Show. On today's show, Ken Olin and Patricia Wedding, Kathy Griffin and Jerry O'Connell. Hit it, John. <laughs> familiar. It's weird. <laughs> I have a feeling there's a girl here named Kayla. I don't know why. <laughs> Hi, Martin. Hi, Rosie. How are you? Fine, thank you. What exactly is the Believe in Me Foundation? The Believe in Me Foundation is an organization that helps inner city kids go to college. Excellent. And um, are you doing a big fundraiser? Actually, yes. And I'm here with my mentor, Greg. Hello, Greg. How you doing? How are you? The, the Believe in Me Foundation is a Wall Street-based organization that provides mentoring, financial aid assistance, and summer jobs for inner-city youth from New York City and the surrounding tri-state area. We have a, a Globe Trotter event on February 13th. Uh, proceeds will go to help students like Martin and our future applicants in the future. Excellent. And the phone number's right up there right now if you'd like information about the Believe in Me Foundation. I'm familiar with it. My friend Jennifer is on the board there. And I thank you very much for being here. You did a great job. And good luck with the Harlem <laughs> Hi, John! Hello, Rosie! How are you? Good. How's everybody online? Everyone online's pretty good. Are they yeah, we've up? been yeah. you know, we've been going crazy with this uh, eBay thing. I know. It's so You know, so do you remember cool. John when you took off your tie? Yeah. You signed your tie? Right. Guess how much money we got for your tie? How much? Just guess. Uh gosh, I don't know. Just guess. Five hundred bucks. Sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen hundred <laughs> That is so wild. You know what that means, John? What does it mean? I want the one you're wearing now. Take it off. You do? Take it off I... and sign the back <laughs> of it, McDaniel. And don't give me any crap. I'm happy to. I'm happy to. That is so cool. Sign it. All right. Now, you know what we thought? Because February is Valentine's Day. Right. I came up with this idea. Actually, yeah. it wasn't me. A few people on the staff did. OK. Yeah, Doug, mostly, I think. Um, here's what we're going to have. See this? Rosie's February kiss off. Every celebrity that comes on our show during this month, we're going to make them kiss this little square. And then we're going to make them sign their name down there, oh, like I'm going to cool. do right now. And then we're going to put it up on eBay the entire month. OK? So any celebrity you see on the show for the oh, month of wow. February, which is Valentine's Day month, That's right. you can buy their lips and autograph on oh, eBay. So, so look cool. for that, all right? <laughs> Mine's going up today. Yeah. Now, some people have been getting mad, have been saying, you know, the things are going for too much money. I'm like, I yeah. know, but it's not a store. It's a charity. It's, an it's not auction. like a store yeah. where you can, you know, walk in and say, excuse That's me, true. people of Macy's, you're charging too much for this blazer. <laughs> it's, right. a, it's a charity. We're trying to get a lot of money. <laughs> That's the whole thing. We're getting the money. It's a charity. But we are doing fixed price items. We don't have a lot of them, but we're yeah. going to do them. Do we're going to do them. them. Okay. Yeah, you know what we're selling every day? What? See these cards? Yeah. All my notes? We're selling them. That's I'm cool. telling you, it's like Crazy Eddie. It's I'm cleaning. insane! I'm selling everything! <laughs> I am. I'm, you house. know, if you see it on this show, it <laughs> is for sale. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Including a date with you, John, so get ready. That's oh, next. Oh, Rosie. Oh, my not right God. away. Not right away. I'm just saying. Oh, my heart. You and me will take two people out to the theater and Joe Allen's. What do you say? That saying? is excellent. That would be idea. good. I was there last night. Me too. I love it. Yeah, too. great. Well, so I just came back from Miami. Yeah. I was there for the weekend. I did not go to the Super Bowl. You didn't? No, because I missed my kids. I came home early. Oh, well, that's... I came home Saturday because I went yeah. to the conference for the, um, you know, the yeah. national television executive, all the people who have syndicated shows right. had to go down there. And I was down there. And my friend Gloria Estefan filled in. And thank you, Glo. Yes, she, she did a did. great job. Okay. Wasn't she wonderful? So cute. It was very weird. 
weird, too. Well, I was wondering. Yeah, because I was in Miami, actually, at her house. Yeah. And I was watching her TV, my show, with her on. With her and it was like, That's trippy. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> you know what else happened when I was there? I read this great, great, great book. What is it? It's called The Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. Oh. Now, people had told me about this book, but it's one of those books where people say it, but I never really... I'm telling you, go out and buy this book today. It is in paperback. It was the greatest book I've read in so long, and it really, like, warmed me. It's about family and mothers and daughters and forgiveness and yeah. acceptance of love. It was so touching, but That's you know great. what? Here's the weird thing. The book, the paperback, had a printing problem, which I didn't know. Oh, yeah? So I'm in Miami at this house, and it's dusk. It's starting to get... So you know when you're trying to read outside and it's dusk, and you can't mm -hmm. really see, but you think I'll stay out here a little bit longer? You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. All right, so I'm reading chapter 11, 12. I'm going to chapter 13. I'm not, I don't look at the chapter number. I'm reading. It's the same thing as chapter 11. And I'm reading, I'm going, I think I already read this. <laughs> but, and then I'm like, well, maybe they're recapping it for emphasis. Maybe there's a reason. Because oh. there's a part where they write letters, you know? Yeah. And then I'm turning the page, and it's the same thing. And I'm like, all right, I'll just skip this chapter. It must have been a mistake. And I go to the next chapter, I've read that too. You're kidding. I honestly thought I had a stroke. <laughs> I did. You missed I was sitting there going, I wonder if I can move my arms. I probably can't move my arms. But then I moved oh, my arms. No. Oh, I thought I had a stroke. That is crazy. And then I thought it was like the Twilight Zone or Candid Camera. Right. I didn't understand. But it was just, it went chapter 11, 12, 11, 12, 13. And then it was back on track. And then it was back on track. Wow. And that book, I'm selling on eBay today. The 11, 12, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> my own book. Good We're selling idea. it, so go on there. But, uh, <laughs> wow. It's a great book. We have to have the author on. We're going to have her booked in March. It's in paperback. Oh, it's uh, over a year old, but I'm telling you, go buy it because it really got me. Also, while I was on vacation with a few friends, I was playing Scrabble. Yeah. Okay, call me a nerd, whatever. And I just want everyone to know I had the most miraculous four-tile move. I, uh, <laughs> it was towards the end of the, of the game. I had my seven tiles left, but there were no tiles in the bag. Mm. I was down by over 50 points. I thought my only hope is to use all seven tiles for my 50 bonus points. Right. But I had the weirdest letters. J-H-O. I'm like, what is the chance of this? Right. There's one triple word score open. I think I'm going to go for it and put Josh down because, you know, to Josh someone, I didn't mm. know if I would get challenged because right. Josh is also an eight. A name, right. Josh turned out to be a legal move, a triple on my eight. I got 73 points in one move! Oh, my God! <laughs> Josh! That is cool. Good for you. Can I just say, next to the sixth grade foul shooting contest where I narrowly beat Lauren Williams, it was the highlight of my competitive life. It was Excellent. better than any award I've ever won. When I put Josh down and I handed those tiles and I saw it because the S was connected to a long word like warrant. Right. So I got warrants. warrants and I got the triple word Josh with the triple eight on the J. It's crazy. Josh! It's crazy. Do you get an idea with that? I do. It's exciting. All right. People who don't play Scrabble have no understanding of the joy and euphoria you get when that happens. And just for everyone, Q-A-T is a word. You don't even need the U. Q-A-T. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's a word. I looked it up. <laughs> I've never heard X -U, of that. X-U, also a word. Really? Who knew? i got to write these down. All right. <laughs> the game was really good, did you think? I mean, the actual game wasn't good, but the whole thing was good. I thought Cher, what a beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Great. Wonderful. Looks yeah, great. Yeah, I saw that. Gloria Estefan, Stevie Wonder, the new Fudu Daddy heads, whatever they Who's are. They were daddy, good, yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. And we're giving away for the Super Bowl uh, this lovely Sprint Super Bowl cushion thing that uh, is really important. It's really important to have. What? They're not getting it, the audience? <laughs> Jeanette, you're distracting me. <laughs> so just be quiet now. The audience is getting these from Sprint. Yes, they do. And Sprint is also responsible for bringing the kids from the Hole in the Wall gang, terminally ill children, to the Super Bowl every year, as they did this year. So we're giving this to the whole audience, and I'm signing this and putting it on eBay. Okay? There you go. John, you sign that, too. Okay, cool. <laughs> How much time do I have? I have? I have time. All right. All right. I came home from the Super Bowl. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. I also rented a boat while I was there. Yeah. And I just would like to say once again how much I enjoy 
the Metro Dade Miami Marine Patrol unit. They are the finest group of um, Marine Patrol men I've ever met. I enjoy them. I think that they're fair-minded, good people. Oh, boy. And uh, there are probably some women on that force as well. But really? the men who patrol right around that area that I like to go have always been kind when they've pulled me over just to say hi. And I just want to uh, thank them once again for doing that. Okay, uh, I got stung by a bee while I was there, and it was the first time I'd ever been stung by a bee. Really? How was that? I was totally paranoid, because you ever hear of those people who get stung by a bee and then they die? Yeah. Since I'd never been stung by a bee, I had never contemplated whether or not I was <laughs> one, of, one those of those allergic people. But as soon as I got stung by the bee, and my friends were like, look, there's the stinger, and they pulled out the stinger, I was positive I was in anaphylactic shock. <laughs> I was positive. I called up the hospital. I'm like, what are the signs of anaphylactic shock? And the lady's like, I don't know. Your throat starts to swell, and you can't breathe. I'm like, thank you. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I swear. <laughs> I am such a paranoid phobic wow. person about that. Wow. If I hear about a new disease, like if I'm watching 2020 and there's some right. weird disease that you can only get, like, bitten by a bug in the rainforest, I'm positive I have all the symptoms. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not have anaphylactic shock, oh, and I'm boy, happy that's... to say that while I swatted my back to see what had landed on me, I killed the bee. And all you animal people, too bad it stung me. Okay. <laughs> Also, last week, I only exercised four days instead of five chub clubbers. I am mm. sorry. But you know what? I got to get motivated. Now it's February. We're moving up to 25 minutes. That's right. Yesterday, I will admit, I did one hour on the treadmill. Good. I couldn't believe it either. It's great. It did not, however, stop me from having buffalo wings, beer, <laughs> ruffles, and um, <laughs> onion dip. I did, right. did get the new baked ruffles. Oh, you did? to be conscious of my intake of calories, but uh, just eat less, and that is actually less than I would have normally ate. That's true. Okay, also tragic news. Oh, we have to go, right? I'm over now? Okay, all right, so I, I'll tell you later. Uh, on today's <laughs> show, we have a great show. Ken Olin and Patricia Wedding, who are now on LA Doctors and 30-something. The very funny Kathy Griffin is here. And cutie patootie Jerry O'Connell. Don't go away, we'll be right back. met when they played lovers in a streetcar named Desire. They played friends on a little show called 30-something, which I loved. Their real-life marriage led them back where we like them best, playing lovers again in the CBS drama L.A. Doctors. Please welcome the equally talented Ken Olin and Patricia Wedding. <laughs> Good. Great. I gotta say, during 30 something, which I loved so much, <laughs> as much as I love Party of Five now, right. I um, saw you guys at Jerry's Deli <laughs> with your kids. Oh, yeah. Were you and getting it was, along? Yeah, you were getting along. Yeah, but it was cool. very weird for me because you were both married to other people on oh, the yeah. show, and right. I was like, look at them, they're cheating on their right. spouses. <laughs> We but got that constantly. Every, what are you doing with him? No, no, this should not be happening. You know, right. people pulling us apart. But it so is. It's, it's a weird thing because yeah. we're used to seeing you with the yeah, other. Yeah, especially actors. thirty something. Because thirty something gave the illusion of being so personal and so intimate. Right. So right. you know, you had this sense that you were watching these people in the most personal and private moments life. of their lives, and then yeah. you know, we were violating that. And, right. But uh, we've been married a long time. Yeah. How long have we been married? It'll be uh, 17 years in, in May. May. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Yeah. Where, where did you meet? Um, we actually met, uh, we met in Grand Central Station. We were, um, we were going up to uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire to do a regional theater production of, um, was that like one clap for <laughs> Exactly, for one guy from New Hampshire. Yeah, I want to see regional theater. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he didn't even clap twice, he just yeah. clapped once. Yeah. That's it. That's New all Hampshire. <laughs> New Hampshire. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, fine. So, yeah, and I, I actually, um, I, I came into Grand Central Station and I saw her from behind. Oh, and, this uh, he loved, yeah. And, um, the old cute butt. We were down right there. That was like, it. I got to see the face That's on that good. butt. My wife, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and did you know that you were going to be working together after? Yeah, yeah. you did. Yeah, yeah and um, 
we playing lived Stanley under the and Stella, a streetcar. So we were set up to be, you know, romantic with each other. Look, but. we have a, your little wedding photo that you brought for yeah. us. Right? Yeah. You look how there cutie patootie. You look like you're 12 years old. I know. I know. Look yeah. how thin I am. <laughs> <laughs> look how much hair oh, I have. Things change. <laughs> yeah, you still got a lot of hair. You still says all right. Doing all, yeah, not in the front. Now, how did, there, how did, did you guys, you both auditioned for 30 something at the same did you audition for the roles you played as different uh, Right, spouses? and people at, at the network did not know we were married. Marshall and Ed, who were the producers, knew that we were married. But we went in separate just as this character and that character. And then they cast us, and they said, oh, ABC, by the way, we've got something to tell you. These guys are, and they were like, ah, but yeah. it was too late. They'd already cast now, us. Now, how come you didn't go for the roles where you were each other's spouse? It just it didn't seem... They didn't think it was good chemistry. We tried. Really? <laughs> yeah, we're showing them now. But no, I think I think they had very specific ideas in yeah. mind of who these individual yeah. characters were, and we fit different models for them. And it never, right. you know, they, I, they didn't know us that well. We we had met them. Uh, we met Marshall Erskovitz and his then uh, wife Susan Schilliday at preschool. So we, they they knew us, but they didn't know us so well as to think of us as being. Linked that yeah. way, it didn't make. Well, you met them at the preschool, and you knew they were casting. And that's how you got to the audition. Well, <laughs> sort of. Geez. Well, I, um, our son, he was now um, almost sixteen. He was three years old. It was the first day of preschool, and I take him. He was a very precocious little kid, very articulate with language, and I was very nervous that he wouldn't find a little kid that had the same kind of verbose language that he had. So I was nervous. I'm looking at who he could be, have as a playmate. And I see this little girl, and she's very cute and everything, and a chair fell over. And this little girl went, oh, that startled me. And she was three years old. I said, oh, perfect, Playmate, <laughs> for my son. So I went over, and I went, hello, you know, what's your name? And I got them together, and we arranged a play date. And this was Marshall Herskovitz's daughter. Wow. And Susan Chilliday's daughter. And um, we actually went out to dinner with them, and Marshall said he was casting this pilot. Right. What is it? It's a thing called 30 something. It'll never last. You know, who's going to want to see this? And he said, Well, you know, we came and auditioned for it, but it was thanks to Lizzie and Cliff, actually. Yeah, I do the same thing at playgroups. I look for another kid <laughs> pushing a kid over, picking right. their nose. That's I'm the like, right That's one. the one for my right son. Good. Comedy. That's what you do. If you can punch another kid in the <laughs> yeah. head like I my like son you. does. Exactly. That's right. Um, now, the, the L.A. Doctors, you just did a guest spot, and now you're going to be a recurring character? Yeah. Well, I that's just, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been really fun. Cool. It just worked out. They liked our chemistry now, maybe. I don't know what's changed. 17 years yeah. you guys have gotten it Finally together. Finally, we got yeah. it together. No, you're not directing these as well. Mm. Yeah, oh, you I are am directing actually. Them. Yeah, I've, I've directed two so far, and I'll probably do uh, one more by the end of the year. Yeah, I have. Have you always there. wanted to do? Because I remember you did that uh, the Jim Carrey movie yeah. on Mulberry Drive. Yeah, yeah doing yeah. Time of Maple Drive. What a great piece! Yeah, I'm really that was proud the first time anyone you. looked yeah. at him and went, "What an amazing actor!" Yeah. And Jim Sicking was in that as yeah, well. Yeah, I didn't. I, you know, when it, it was an interesting story because when Jim Carrey came into uh, audition for me, um, I had no idea that he was a comedian. I had no preconceived notions. I had never seen in Living Color and. and the part was a, a very um, angry, uh, dysfunctional alcoholic, which is not really how you, you know, think of Jim Carrey. Right. And, um, but he was so innocent, and he was so raw, and, and he was working so hard. And I thought, wow, this is extraordinary. This kid just got off the bus from Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And I found him, and I asked if he had an agent, and all of the uh, Fox television executives gasped because he was this big star in Living Color. And I, I hired him, and um, he was incredible. You know, he's an extraordinary person. He really is, and a wonderful actor. That that yeah. is a great. That's rentable now, isn't it? Because yeah, I, I think so. I saw a tape of it as well. It's yeah, a it's brilliant a great piece. Movie. It is. Yeah, We're gonna take a break. Come back and talk about LA Doctors and show a clip. Okay. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> Still ahead. Suddenly, Susan's Kathy Griffin. Yeah, back with Ken and Patricia, and uh, you guys are now doing L.A. Doctors on CBS, and it's on Monday nights at 10, 10 o'clock, and you having fun doing it? Yeah, great. actually, we're having a really it's good It's romantic. Time. It's great. Yeah. We never played our romance before in right. anything. I mean, we've played Friends, we've played this, but, but the first scene we did where we were actually supposed to be in love, fall, and play all, I said, oh, my God, we've never acted this, acted it right. out, and it's just... 
It's fun. It's so exhilarating. Does it make actually. it odd, like when you kiss, that everyone's there? Like you know, when you kiss an actor, you're not going out with it's just no, work. No, but you can really kiss them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. When you're doing something else, you're always aware of, oh, well, you know, where am I going to put my hand, and where are they going to touch me? And it's all funny, but it's like, oh, I can just be here. All Do this is nice. You want. <laughs> that's yeah. great. Well, we have a clip. What's the clip? Do you know? Uh, yeah, it's a clip. Patty plays a character who is a, a an old girlfriend of mine from college who's been very sick with um, brain cancer, actually. And so uh, I've, we've become involved with each other again, and I'm trying to convince her that she should, she should have surgery. And she's been very reticent about surgery up until this point. OK, take a look. LA Doctors on Monday night, CBS. Do you want to know the reason why I came back? About a month ago, I was standing in this little village in Ecuador. 12,000 feet, the Andes, breathtaking all around me. And I see standing in the doorway of this tiny shop, this man kissed this woman. And it was so beautiful, that kiss. I want to live longer because of you. You didn't tell me that. I'm telling you now. Oh. <laughs> there we are. I'm doing now, cute. You, you promised me so you, cute. your character's going to get well. You promise our audience your character will get well. Can't Come on. Promise. You're no, she's well, but, but you're a recurring character. Yeah. You have to get well. Well, I'll be there for a while. Let's just yeah, put it that way. Are you going to be there in flashbacks or are you going to be there real life? No, I'll be there in real she's life there for really. a while at least. Excellent. Yeah. Is it odd being directed by your hubby? Oh, I love being directed you do. by him. He's one of the best directors I've it ever took worked with. It's getting used to. Oh, do yeah. Do you get in fights on the set? We're used to. Now it's very. Uh... We've learned to be good. But when we first started, one of the first times we were doing a scene, and, you know, Ken tells me, you know, go over there. Well, no, wait a minute. I wouldn't do that. And we start, you know, and we got into this big fight. Everybody, all the set, all the crew walked away because they, they, they cleared the set. But, you know, I mean, I, I'm no, like, a, I'm a guy and I've got, the, you know, all these big guys, the crew, <laughs> stand, you know, so it's important to me that I at least have Macho. an appearance of some authority, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so I would say, you know, well, yeah. honey, I need you to walk over here. And then I would just go, what? I Why would, would do I that. do that? <laughs> yeah. you know, and so then, you know, all the guys are like, oh. oh is this your <laughs> wife? Uh, Look how she treats him. I'm supposed him. to say hi to you from Matt Craven, who's also an L.A. doctor, who is a huge fan <laughs> yeah. of yours. So if I don't say that, then he gets mad, and his sister gets mad at me. And so, you know, Well, I'm Matt and your sister, you. hello back. Come there on my show anytime yeah. you want. It's delightful <laughs> to have you both here. Next Thank time I see much. you at Jerry's really... Deli, I'm going to say hello. Uh, yes. Please do, and, uh, and I'll buy you lunch. Have you ever had the Snickers cake there? <laughs> no, no, I try not to. What do you mean, no? You lived right near there? You never had the Snickers <laughs> no. cake? No, it's German <laughs> chocolate cake with icing with crunched up Snickers in the icing. Oh, that's Oh, no, I got to yeah. have it. It's, it's yeah. reason to move back to the valley. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Ken and Patricia, thank you very much Thank being you here, you're going to kiss a thing for us, and you're going to sign this <laughs> for us as well. We'll be right back with Kathy Thank Griffin. Thank you very much. All month, everyone's going to sign it. Still ahead from the new miniseries, The 60s, Jerry O'Connell. Keyword, uh, Rosie on America Online on Interactive Monday today. Somebody just asked if I made the onion dip with low-fat sour cream. <laughs> no, I did not. We all know our next guest as the super sarcastic, hilariously funny Vicky on NBC's Suddenly Susan. Take a look. Uh, child, child, um, ch uh, baby, baby. Oh, okay, baby, baby, chair, ba oh, babysitter. Yes, we the 12 parties. <laughs> It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Come get it. Come get it. I'm coming. I'm coming. Who's your mama? Who's your mama? Talk to daddy. Talk to daddy. Stop that. So funny. She's also on the new sitcom, the animated sitcom, Dilbert. Please welcome the always enjoyable Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Did you 
bring me, Kath? I say what, Chub Club? The munchkins are here! I brought Dunkin' Donut munchkins, which are the whole of the donut. And um, I grew up on these. Yes. And um, Are they a staple of your Chub Club plan? Yes, although I'll tell you, <laughs> I, um, I like the chocolate honey dip the best. Uh -huh. But I think this bag only has the powdered and the plain, which really? is sort of my idea of a diet. No kidding. Just plain donuts, not the icing. Yeah, well, actually, I think the Dunkin' Munchkins are actually diet on the Chub Club because you're not having the whole donut. Just the whole. Yeah, you're having less. Just the munchkin. Just the whole. It's like, it's like a little munchkin. Nothing. nothing yeah. Please. Now, do you don't diet, do you? Because you're always fit and trim. No, to tell you the truth, I the like when I stopped dieting, my weight stabilized. It was one of those stories where I always dieted when I was in my 20s, and I always thought I was fat, and then um, I sort of stopped worrying about it, and then I, my weight sort of stabilized. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get to try that. Okay, good. Forget about it. <laughs> Don't it worry works. about it anymore. How's mom and dad? Well, oh, Rosie, so much has happened. What? What? Uh, well, first of all, um, they moved into a new condo. Nice. Yes. Florida, not, right? Not, <laughs> no, Santa Monica, California. Oh. You know, my father's a very, exactly, shout out. My father um, is a very famous actor. Very famous actor. Yes, yes. Um, he's just done a national rice checks, so get ready for those to fly off the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> he can move products like nobody. And um, so they got a new condo. Now, my sister Joyce and I, we had a plan. Yeah. My parents, God love them, they still think it's the depression. And um, they won't throw anything away. So what we had to do was we had to accidentally lose a lot of their things. Really? Yes. And my mother was appalled, but I'm not kidding. They had towels that were literally threadbare. Mm. And then my mom gets really hostile. Like, if you say, Mom, why don't you get a new towel? For God's sake, it's not good enough for you. You're so high and mighty. Just use it. So, you know. <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, one thing that my parents, my parents to this day, well, until we threw them away. Do you remember Le Menus, the frozen, like, they were like, well, oh, the sure. first, like, frozen sort of diet dinners. Yeah. Anyway, my parents um, used to love Le Menus. And they came on, we used to call them Chinette plates. They're like microwavable plates, and they're sort of plasticky. Yeah, yeah, I and remember. And they were sturdy, right? Right, right. So my parents, to this day, use Le Menu plates to microwave everything. <laughs> really? Because they don't understand that later on in, in the world, um, through evolution, other plates were made to be microwavable. Oh, no, only the Le Menu, the other ones melt. That's what my mom said. <laughs> they melt, Kathleen, they'll melt. And so they have like these disgusting Le Menu plates with like all the brown scratches from being cut on after oh, years. Oh, that's and years. sad. So we had to accidentally lose those. Yeah. And my mother was shocked and appalled, and I thought she was going to burst into tears. Now, did you stay with them when you remodeled? Because I know you remodeled. Yes. Um, first of all, let me just say this about remodeling. Now, I know. Oh, you know what I want to ask you? What? Aren't you friends with Ellen Burstyn? Yes. All right, I heard the funniest thing. I heard that Ellen Burstyn goes to your house or the house of a friend and then rearranges your furniture. She's been known to do that, yes. I think that's fantastic. But she has a very good eye. How can I book her? You can book her. <laughs> Call her up. Say, Ellen, my living room needs you. She'll fly in, I'm sure. And so she just comes in and she says, OK, the composition of the room should be like this? Exactly. Or... And the painting, she knows how to hang them at the right level and the order of them. She's fabulous. Really? Her house is honestly one of the nicest houses I've ever seen. Really? And it's not like ga or, or gaudy or ostentatious. Yeah. It's very, very tasteful. and. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. I want her to come to my house and rearrange stuff. All right, get me Ellen Burstyn on the phone, would you? We'll see if oh, we can. Oh, look at you with the power. Yeah, Mine you know, too. there you go. Oh, you get wow. yourself a talk show, and this will be you, Kath. <laughs> get me Ellen Burstyn, get me De Niro, and get me Penny Marshall. Those three, <laughs> boom, eating that in my hands. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. But what life. about the remodeling? What okay, about... so the re first of all, my tip is um, if someone is going through a remodel, to me, it's like a haircut. You don't criticize once they've done it because they can't change anything. So I'm so sick of people coming to my house going, oh, you knocked that wall down? Ooh, I wouldn't have. You don't live here, shut up. Yeah, and, um, yeah sure. But anyway, uh, so, so the remodel is like my life. I'm a huge house nut and all that stuff. So one day, um, I don't like to, you know, when I go to work, I don't like to leave one of the various contractors, electricians, or whatever alone in the place. Because I, I have a, like this vision that I, someday I'll pull down my drywall and there's going to be porno mags and beer cans. Yeah, yeah. I've heard stories like that, exactly. you know, where the contractors just like hang out at your house. So um, I s asked my parents if they could sort of supervise. It's so funny that you'd be afraid of that being in the wall. Like you couldn't just throw it away. <laughs> well, I just don't want to know what they do. I mean, okay, I, I okay, want them, I, understand. I just need don't to know there. that they're doing just, their job. I should have just left that alone. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep going. All right. So what did you do? You hired so anyway, somebody to watch that? No, I hired my parents. Oh, no. I hired them for free. But anyway, <laughs> I, um, I said, can you guys come over and just, you know, just sort of sit there and try to be intimidating. So anyway, right. So anyway, then a couple hours later, I was at work, and I thought, ooh, maybe not such a good idea. So I call my mom, and I go, what's going on? She says, oh, Kathleen, I don't know why you make Pepe carry those heavy tiles all the way up the stairs. We had to make him two sandwiches, and now he's relaxing. <laughs> and 
I'm like, what? In the meantime, Pepe's taking me to the bank. And then he, believe me, you know, contractors see me coming a mile away. And Jorge has a niece who has a kidney problem. So we just sent him home with some coffee. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then my father, who like fancies himself a fix-it guy, but my dad has this way of fixing things. It's like, it's like handyman, like fixing by swearing. Where he thinks if he takes an instrument and swears, things will get fixed. What so I'll mean? go home and I'll walk in and I'll hear, Maggie, get that damn Phillips head, damn it! And he just swears and yells. And my mom runs, oh, I'll get it, Johnny, let me get the wrench. Oh, Christ, all right, oh, Jesus. And they, I'm sorry, you're Catholic. Nobody swears more than Catholics. That's Come true, on. it's true. Come on. But then we go and we ask forgiveness and exactly. all is white clean on Sunday. It's the best trick Catholics ever made. Do what you want during the week. Sunday, say you're sorry. That's how it works. Um, Cap, yeah. you're so funny. And oh, first stop. of all, Dilbert, look at this. All this Dilbert stuff she's signing. She yes, kissed for something eBay. for eBay. Look at this Dilbert M&M dispenser. I love this. You push this, push the mouse. He types, and then the M&Ms come out. There you go. Yes. Now, Kath, will you stick around? We're going to play a Dunkin' Munchkin game. Yes. And we're going to try to win the audience some Dunkin' Donuts. Well, that is the best gift. Is that a good thing? Yes. All right, give me a high five. Right. Right Suddenly, Susan's Kathy Griffin. We'll be right back after this. Before we play Munchkin Madness, Kath, tell everybody how, when you're going to do your Gilders Club thing. Oh, okay. Um, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Florida, Gilders Club, a benefit for, it's a, you know, named after Gilda Radner. It's an organization that helps people with cancer, families of people with cam cancer. April 17th at the, oh, um, oh, good. April There's 17th, Gilders number. Club of South Florida. Call for tickets, 954-963-9499. April 17th. And it's a great organization. Yes. It is. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a game I like to call Munchkin Madness. With the help of two studio <laughs> audience members, the object of this game, and whoever thought of this is going to be fired, whoever catches five munchkins in their mouth first wins. We have to go off for 45 seconds worth of time. They don't think we're going to catch one. But I'm going My to... hair and makeup is ruined just thinking about it. OK, yeah. I'm playing for the middle of the audience, and you're playing for the sides, OK? For me? You're playing for the All sides. Right. I'm playing for the middle. And. Um, the winner, the winner, whoever catches the most munchkins wins. Um, you guys win free a dozen donuts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Start the music, John. Start the clock and throw the donuts. cheat because I didn't catch one, so it actually stayed within my job club guidelines. The whole audience, you all get Dunkin' Donuts. We'll be right back with Jerry O'Connor, Kathy Griffin! lip from that. And now there's sugar in my hair, so it's not OK. Everything's fine. You may remember our next guest is one of the many victims in the scary movie Scream. I don't remember that because I didn't see it. Or from the TV series Sliders. But who could forget him as a lovable Vern and Stand By Me? Take a look at this. Oh, man, you guys are not going to believe this. This is so boss. Oh, man, where do you hear this? Where do you hear this? You won't believe it. It's unbelievable. Let me catch my breath. All right, all the way from my house. I ran all the way home. Come on, you guys listen to me. This is boss. Come on. Sorry. Okay, forget it. 
Well, he's all grown, uh, grown up. Sorry, Duncan Munchkin. And a cutie patootie, please welcome Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> Very people well. People often ask me if we are related, even though we don't have the same name. Um, uh, people insist that we are related. I cannot tell you how many times I'm walking down the street and someone goes, oh my God, I know you, I know you. And I think, yes, I'm a big celebrity, how are you? And they go, you're Rosie's brother, right? <laughs> and I go, no, no, no I'm Jerry O'Connell. Yeah. That's Rosie O'Donnell. Whole different name. Totally different. Not yeah. related whatsoever. They think Chris O'Donnell and you, Jerry O'Connell, are my brothers. Neither but, are. But we are Irish, so we're somehow related. I don't know how. Now, are you 100% Irish? Uh, no. I'm, I'm the melting pot. I'm from, I'm from New York. Yeah. Polish, Irish, Italian. Did you everything. grow up in the city? Grew up right in the city, right in the uh, village. No kidding. And your parents encouraged you to get into the showbiz thing? You know, they... Um, they uh, were not a showbiz family. They're not actors at all. But uh, I, I was pretty much... Uh, outgoing kid. I, I was the kid who didn't shut up like at Thanksgiving dinner. So they said, God, get him into acting. Let's get him out of the house. And you were just a baby when you did that movie. How old were you then? I was 11. I was 11. I was, um... I love that film. I, it's great. I mean, I was, I was at school. Somebody picked me out and said, uh, would you like to read? And I read. And then they said, would you like to meet, uh, Rob Reiner on, uh, on, uh, Monday? And I went, yeah, sure. So I went home and I said, Mom, I'm gonna meet my Rob Reiner. And she said, you're, you're gonna meet the guy from All in the Family. So I thought I was gonna meet Archie Bunker. Right, right. And I walk in the room, and I see Rob Reiner, and I'm like, dude, you're meathead. What is this? <laughs> I think I got the part, so. <laughs> you got it anyway. You were adorable. You were such a cute little yeah. kid. It was, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It's amazing, you know, to, uh, it's, it's like everybody having a baby picture of you, you know? It's exactly. Like, it's, it's funny. You got teased, though? They called you that you were the chubby kid in that, but you I weren't was, really uh, yeah, that chubby. I was, I, I, I would have been a member of the chub club. You would have, uh, yeah, if yeah. If you were around. But you weren't that chubby, I don't think. I, I was, yeah, exactly. You should talk to my mom. She insisted I was just husky. That was it. Yeah. Did you wear they, husky jeans, like, from Sears when you were a kid? Yeah, there was a little bit of shopping in the husky section. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Well, you are absolutely adorable. And this boy here is your brother. Is that, he an that's actor as well? That's my bro. He is an actor. We're he looks like a cross sliders. between you and Eric Roberts. Uh, I don't, we're not related to Eric Roberts at no, all. No, but, but this uh, could be like the hybrid of you and Eric Roberts. Yeah, right? yeah. He's, I, I, I don't like that picture because you can see he's taller than me. And, uh, he is my younger brother. And I don't like to admit that he's taller than me. Have you worked together at all? Yeah, we, we do a show called Sliders. It's on, uh... No, I've never seen it. What channel is it on? Sci-Fi Network. It's kind of a science fiction show. And, um... And I like science fun. fiction. Yeah. Do we get that sci-fi channel in New York? I think you do, yeah. They've recently changed all of the, uh, numbers of the stations in New York. Like, yeah. over the weekend. Very Cartoon yeah. Network is no longer 67, in case you're wondering. It is now? 22, I believe. Great. Yeah. Can I borrow your pen? Yes, Let you me write, that, write down. that down, because you never know. Let me know. Okay, yeah. I got it. Now, you're in uh, the brand new miniseries, The 60s, which looks like it's going to be uh, an event, an NBC uh, movie uh, miniseries. That's and who it? do you play in this? Um, I, play, uh, I play Brian Herlihy, who uh, it's basically about four youths of the 60s, and they uh, sort of go their separate ways in a decade. My sister goes to uh, hate Ashbury and becomes a hippie. My brother becomes an anti war protester. And I actually uh, I become a Marine and go to Nam. Really? Yeah. And you weren't even born then? I was not even an egg. I was not even a twinkle in my parents' eye. No. Nowhere near the 60s. Born in 74. Did you do research about it? Yeah, we, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, reading and a lot of films that are on it. And uh, Linda Opes, who produced it, who's a terrific producer, uh, had yes, a lot of... Uh, Sleepless in Seattle. Yes. yes. I was in that. I know. All right. Don't I give that a plug? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but um, she, uh, she, she had vets around all the time, and it was really, uh, it, it, it was really great. And she was a real stickler for everything being real in the 60s, because people were around in the 60s. It's not like you're doing something from the 1800s. You could make up anything exactly. you want. That's exactly how it happened. Come on. Right. But, we have a clip? Yes. Which I clip do we do. have, do you know? Uh, this is where I, uh, I have pretty good news for my family. OK, take a look. Jerry O'Connell from the miniseries The 60s. It's a private war. Whoa! Hey! <laughs> 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 got up a little earlier than I thought. <laughs> oh! Kit Kat, I missed you too. Hey, Sergeant, already. Oh, born leader, huh? Take after the old man. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy you're home. Well, it's not going to be for long. Oh! No, 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 no. It's okay because I've got some really good news. I'm going to Vietnam. <laughs> That's good. Excellent. It starts um, February 7th and then again on February 8th. 
You also were in one of my favorite films, Jerry Maguire. Yes, yeah. You played the guy who dissed my Tommy. Yes, yes, I know that. I got in, I got in a lot of trouble for that. A lot of people still, m members of my family won't talk to me because I played Kush, the guy who dissed Tom Cruise. I mean, yeah. people like throw things at me at the street. How could you leave him? It was a movie part, please. <laughs> I know. Don't hit me. Stop I, kicking me. When I saw that movie, I was going, I think that's the little kid from uh, Stand By Me. Yeah, well, so so I went from the little kid from Stand By Me to the guy who dissed Tom Cruise. Exactly. Yeah. Not a bad gig if you can get it. I know. But I'm not playing bad guys anymore. You know, the fact that some of my aunts won't talk to me because I dissed Tom Cruise. Right. That's it. I don't have to play a bad guy. I don't, I don't, I don't need that. Where do you live now? I live uh, L.A., New York. Sort, yeah. of, uh, sort of split my time. I, I, I like to come back home. Do you like L.A.? Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a nice town. It's sunny all the time. I yeah. get the tan. Yeah, exactly. I, I eat very healthy. But you know, you can't like get like food in LA. You know, nobody serves like meatball parmesan sandwiches there in LA. There you go. You know? I, I mean, enjoy that. That's not on the jump. No, everything is uh, everything's so healthy. You have to eat like sprouts and yeah. stuff. Yeah, not good. Not good at no. all. It's lovely to meet you. You as well. You're Rosie. adorable. You're Thank a cutie you. patootie. Look Thank at you. Jerry O'Connell all grown up. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. Watch the 60s miniseries on NBC. Thanks a lot. Get right there. Griffin and Kath, just to show you how powerful I am. Hi, Ellen Burstyn. Hi, Rosie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, Ellen, I'm really good. I'm sitting here with Kathy Griffin from Suddenly Susan, and she told me that she's heard stories about your interior decorating. <laughs> Kath, go ahead, talk to Ellen. Ellen, now, because uh, I'm in the middle of a remodel, but I haven't done the furniture yet. So what is your method? Do you look at the space, or how do you decide what to do? Um... Well, first of all, I usually get a couple of strong friends who do the actual moving of the furniture. That's me. That's when she calls me. Go ahead. <laughs> and then I just try the big pieces in different arrangements, uh -huh. you know, and, and in unusual arrangements. Like I figure out, well, what do I want to look at when I'm sitting on the couch? The TV, the fireplace, or out the window? Now, oh. Ellen, is it true that you've often gone to friends' house and rearranged their furniture without their really re requesting you to do that? <laughs> Well, I, don't, I hope I haven't been that bold, but I have, I have arranged the uh, furniture in friends' houses. Would you be willing to fly out to L.A.? We'll fly you first class to do Kathy's house with her because she feels as though no one could do it but you. Oh, that's very funny. Listen, I'm in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, in rehearsal for Long Day's Journey in tonight. Well, that sounds like a no. Oh, is that... Well, Kathy, well, can you wait till she's done with the run? How long is the run there, Ellen? I'll be finished April 3rd. Can you wait till oh, April... I can't wait. Can you wait till April Yes, 3rd? I can wait. She will wait for you, Ellen. All right, then I'll do it. All right! Ellen Carson! I love that! Thank you very much, Ellen. I will see you at the Grand Union. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, um, tomorrow's show, Regis oh. Philbin will be here, Treat Williams, and from Allie McBeal, Ling, Lucy Lou. We'll see you. Thanks, Kath. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Bye-bye.